All right, so I'm logged in here into Azure DevOps, and um, what we're looking at right now is the Azure Boards feature that Jose was talking about. Um, within the boards here, I can set this up so I can start out and do some high-level top-down planning and then utilize one plan to add in some extra capabilities to that. That's uh, so what I was talking about, financials, resource, et cetera. And so I can start out at the very highest level, building out my strategic themes. From there, I could break those down into different programs. Um, I could break those then down into epics and, and so on and so forth. Um, you're not locked into this particular hierarchy by any means, depending on which methodology you're using and which, if you're using SAFE, which version of SAFE, you may have more or less levels in there. Um, and that's completely fine. Um, also, to, to throw some new, you know, ideas into the mix, you don't have to just, you know, plan this all out top down from here. We can also allow some ideation to happen, which will then flow into this planning process as well. And those ideas can be captured a variety of ways. Here, what you're seeing is I'm in teams, and we can set up a team where people can come in, all from, say, all around the business or whatever groups of users that you want, stakeholders, customers, whoever it might be, can come in and submit ideas that you can then review that might end up turning into new epics and or new uh, programs, etc. Um, and this can also be done via Power Apps, so people can do this right from their mobile phone if they wanted to do so. Um, and or we can post these things on, say, company portal pages, you know, in SharePoint. Or, you know, there's lots of different opportunities here, but the basics of it is we can have an idea portal where people can put in ideas that will then flow into this process, and then I can just simply drag and drop them to align them into the right, say, program and or theme. Um, so it falls into your hierarchy properly. <clears throat> From there, um, I might want to start doing some high-level planning before we even approve this, right? And so I'm going to go into one of my programs here, my e-commerce portal development program. And um, you can also do this, say, at the Epic level or at whatever level that you want, depending on what level you want to track your resources and your budgets at. Some people choose to be more detailed. Some people choose to do it at a little higher level, like I'm doing it here today at the program level. Um, and what you'll first see here is we have all of our program details in here. We've put in some high-level dates, and there's some totals of financials here. Uh, but a lot of times people need to do time phase, so meaning by month, by quarter, by year types of financials. Um, you know, break that out into, say, capital and operational expenses, um, et cetera, et cetera. I need a little more detail than that before we can go and get this approved. <clears throat> and so to do that, I'm going to click on the One Plan tab here. And that's going to load up one plan right here with inside of this program, so I can start to build out some of those details. Um, so initially, I might start out with a high-level resource plan, um, which can then in turn turn into my labor costs. So if I come here to my resource plan tab, let's say I'm going to need a team. In this case, I've asked for team three uh, for the next period of time. I'm doing this right now in months um, in percents, but I could switch to FTEs if you were looking for more of an FTE view of the world. Um, and I can also switch this to say by quarters or by year, depending on what level of detail um, you know, you're trying to look at here and you wanna plan by. But the basics of this is, is we're gonna need some resources to come in and work on this program and or Epic, et cetera. Um, and we need to forecast that in the future. How many resources am I gonna need? Am I gonna need one team, two teams, three teams? Am I gonna need some specific people with some specific skill sets? Um, and for how long am I going to need them for? And so this resource planner allows you to do just that. Put in the basics here. It's very much like an online Excel spreadsheet kind of a format. So you can kind of key this in, find the resources that you want, and build out a high-level resource plan fairly quickly. So at this point, I'm not doing any detail planning, right? I haven't built out user stories and every little task and bug and all that. I just know that based off of the swag or the high-level estimate it's going to take to do this, you know, bucket of work that we're looking at doing, I'm going to need some resources. Here's about what I think I'm going to need. From there, then, I can convert this more into the financial view of the world. So then I can come in, I can hit import here, and it's going to import those costs based off of the resource plan that I put together, and it'll total up and give me my labor cost here. So I don't have to go and try to manually calculate that. Generally speaking, we would do that using blended rates and such so that we can get those high-level estimates. From there, you can key in any other costs. There's not necessarily just labor costs. We may have contracts and materials and supplies, software that we may need to purchase, you know, et cetera. 
Um, and that all rolls up to my total budget to say, okay, for this program, in this case, I think I'm going to need $1.1 million um, to go and do this, right? Um, and you can also track things like benefits. Later on, we can track forecasts and actuals in here. Um, so this cost planning tool can be used you know, later on throughout the process as well. <clears throat> Another important capability in here is I may need to put in a high-level uh, roadmap or plan for this program and, you know, when things are going to happen. And so we can do that here right within Azure DevOps. I can come in and I can build out, say, the different phases and stages that this is going to be in, or I can organize it other ways and really build out high level from a timing perspective, how long do we think it's going to take to go implement this program, or at least an MVP version of it, and or Epic, you know, et cetera. <clears throat> so that can be a really nice um, way to go and do that. And it's a little bit separate. It's a little bit removed from the user stories, tasks, and bugs and such. You know, we're going to be ever adding those and building out our backlogs and all this, and it can be sometimes hard to understand, okay, well, when am I going to get the value? When is this actually going to be delivered? And so these pieces of information can then be rolled up into our high-level roadmaps, which we'll see in a little bit. <clears throat> so at that point, I've now gone in, you know, I've kind of built out my business case. I've put in some information here around what we're trying to do. I've put in a high-level resource plan. I've put in my um, high-level budget. And now we can go through an approval process to go get this approved. But instead of just, you know, saying, do you approve yes or no, uh, OnePlan actually extends the capabilities of Azure DevOps and gives you some capabilities to allow you to come in and do some portfolio planning and selection and some what-if scenarios to figure out when should we do these things based off the value that they're going to give us, um, when can we do these within our constraints, we only have a certain amount of <coughs> um, resources as well as budget. And so, you know, keeping those things in mind, how can we go and build out our roadmap within our constraints and to get the most valuable things done first so we can start driving that value back to the business. And so what I've done here is I've switched into my portfolio analysis view here. Um, and what we're looking at is basically the same thing, you know, a replica of what we just saw over in Azure DevOps. And so you can see here, I have my strategic themes broken down into programs and then into my different epics and so on and so forth forth here. Um, and I can start to do some prioritization. Well, how and why should I do this prioritization? Well, um, you know, you might use things like, say, WSJF, weighted shortest job first. So based off of some information that I put in, you know, a high level swag, how risky do we think this is? How time critical is this? You know, uh, meaning, you know, What's the loss if we do it later rather than sooner? And that all rolls up and gives me a WSJF score. We're not locked into WSJF by any means, but SAFE does uh, recommend that as well as many other um, portfolio management, agile portfolio management models. Um, but we can use other types of prioritization scores if need be as well. Um, um, you know, and accommodate and or multiples in here to, you know, utilize while you're making these types of choices. Um, I can also put things in here like more traditional ROIs, NPVs, IRRs, if we're capturing that information, um, then we can use that to make some decisions here as well in my view. So from there, um, we can uh, prioritize just directly within a particular, say, program, so I can now drag and drop and move things around within programs and within strategic themes, or if I wanted to, I could focus on, say, down to my epic level, here's a list of all my epics across all programs, across all strategic themes, right, and or come in and utilize the filter to filter this down, I just want to look at the epics within this program or these two programs or this theme or, you know, whatever it might be. So you can, you know, get it down to the list of the items that you're looking to prioritize is basically what I'm saying. And from there, it can be as simple as drag and drop. I can come here and drag and drop this guy up two more and say, oh, you know, this one looks pretty good. It has a high WSGF. I want to bump that up a couple notches. And so simply just doing some rank stacking, drag and dropping of these items based off of the information that's there. Now, you might be saying, well, I can already do dragging and dropping right within Azure DevOps, and that's absolutely true. This adds on a couple extra layers. 
Number one is I can pull up my timeline over here on the side and I could show this say by program increment and or quarter, month, year, you know, whatever level of detail that you want to show. Um, and you can see where people are asking for these things to be done and about how long they're planning on taking. And so this is starting to show me a view of what my roadmap could be, right? We haven't locked this in yet, but it's what it could be. But the problem is if we do all these things at the times people are asking them to be done, we may have some issues. We might have some constraint issues. Specifically, we might have financial budget problems and or resource problems. And so what I can overlay on top of this down below here um, is a financial view. If we were to do all of these projects and I can create a target, a target is basically a budget. So let's say this was for my IDT department as a whole um, and I only have, uh, in this case, $100,000 a month and or I could switch this to do it quarterly if I wanted to maybe, um, you know, look at it, whatever level of detail that you want. Um, $300,000 a quarter in this case, um, then you can see we're going to have some budget issues if we do all of these things, right? So how do we go and fix that? And there's um, some easy ways to do some what-if scenarios around how we can solve these problems. Number one is we can scroll to the bottom here to some of these lower priority epics that we're looking at right now and say, what if we don't do these? And simply come in here and just uncheck these. When I do that, You'll notice it reloads down here and we now have some greens. And so as I continue to do that and take off, you know, my bottom items and basically you're saying we're not going to do those and or we're going to put them on hold for a period of time. That can help us to solve some of our budget issues. That may not be an option. Maybe these are things that we have to do. So I can you know, check these back up. My other option is, well, we can take some of these lower priority items over here and we can simply drag them out and say, well, what if we were to delay them for three months, six months, you know, whatever it might be, and we can drag and drop and move these guys around um, and see how that then affects our costs down below. And you can see it will continue refreshing there until we get to a scenario that we want. And so that's from more of a cost perspective, making sure that we stay within our budget constraints. Uh, another option, though, is what if we get more budget? So I can create another target that has a higher budget um, and then see how that then rolls up and if that's going to fix our issues. And maybe as a business, we're willing to make a bigger investment there, right? So that's more on the financial side of things, but then we can do the same more from a resource perspective here as well. And so I can look at my different resources here, in this case, my different teams, if you're doing planning by teams and or if you're getting down to named people, you can see you can do either or here. Um, and I can see where I have issues, where I have constraints. Again, I can look at that by month or I can switch this over to by quarter and see where all the issues are, where we have some reds and over allocations and you know, so on and so forth here. And so you can see, for example, uh, team two has some issues uh, through August through November here, and it's because we're asking them to work on two different epics at the same time, so that's a problem. There's a, a, you know, a conflict there that we need to figure out how to resolve. Again, we have the same options at our disposal. We can come in and we can start to uncheck maybe one of these epics and say, what if we don't do one of these, especially if it's lower priority? We can uncheck that, and or we can move things around and see how we can say maybe move one of the lower priority ones out a little bit so that there's not that conflict anymore, right? And as I'm dragging and dropping and checking and unchecking, that's all going to update in real time down in the bottom. Once I get it all the way I want it, then I can come in and I can save these as scenarios and I can come back to them at any time. So scenario A, maybe we're not going to do these bottom three epics. That solves all of our problems. Scenario B, we need to just move those three epics out six months, eight months, whatever it might be. And then as a business, you know, with our, say, steering committee, we can come through and figure out, um, you know, who is going, you know, what are we going to do? Which option are we going to go with? Are we going to provide more funding and or more resources? Are we going to not do these items? Or are we going to move these things out so that we can stay within our constraints? And so the goal here of this particular portfolio analysis module is just that high level top down prioritization, but while keeping in mind our constraints of both cost and resources. <clears throat> Once I get it the way I want it, I can then commit that scenario um, and then really, you know, go and start actually executing on it, right? And so I would do that the same way I might always do. So back over in Azure DevOps, um, you know, I could start to build out my user stories and detailed tasks and bugs and, you know, so on and so forth here, um, you know, under these different items um, and utilize the Kanban boards within here to update the status, you know, dragging and dropping from one status to the next and uh, so on and so forth. You know, all the tools and features and capabilities that you're already possibly using in Azure DevOps here to do that. 
as you're working on it. One thing that one plan adds that um, Jose had mentioned, though, is that you have the ability for those team members to actually come in and fill out timesheets on these things. And so in true, pure Agile, uh, you shouldn't have to fill a timesheet because you're only working on one thing at a time. But we find in real world scenarios that's not always the case and or companies, finance, accounting, et cetera, require people to fill out timesheets to get paid um, and or for you know auditing type purposes and so on and so forth. Um, so you know, in a business and an enterprise, if you do have a a requirement for timesheets. We provide the ability to do that right through Azure DevOps. So these are all the items that I've been um, assigned, whether those be you know user stories, task bugs, etc. And then I can simply just come in and fill in my time on these things, um, you know, as I've worked on them over the week. Save and submit, and that can go through an approval process and roll back then into your actuals on that particular say epic. Um, so we provide those capabilities as well if needed. Um, on top of that, you know, a lot of people have some real concerns and real needs around resource capacity planning. And so if I'm more of a resource manager, someone who's trying to make sure that our resources are being utilized but not over allocated across all the different work that's going on, then I can come into a capacity planning view, very similar to the view you saw earlier, but it's just you know full screen and meant specifically for a resource manager. And I can come in and do things like I just want to look at my teams, for example, and see all my different teams and who's working on what within different periods of time. Um, and then I can come here and I can, you know, go into say team three and see where the demand is coming from and where the issues are and, you know, work with the teams to get that view that of what's going on and start to make adjustments and figure out how we're going to get this all done. Maybe we need to bring another team online or maybe we need to get one of these projects pushed out or whatever it might be. And this is actually all editable. So I could simply drag and drop things around and so on and so forth. Um, if that is your process and that's what you're looking to do. From there, as these, um, you know, EPICS programs, et cetera, are going on through the different program increments, people want reports, generally status reports um, with, you know, lots of different useful information. So we can see how things are going. Are we on track? Are we off track? Um, and from all the different aspects, are we on track from a timing perspective, from a budget perspective, um, and just overall, how are things going? And so what this view here is, is a, a Power BI report that shows um, what we're calling our portfolio health summary. And you'll see it mimics the same uh, structure. It is the same structure as we saw before. So I have strategic themes broken into programs with my different epics below that. And at each level, I can see the status of these items. I can track metrics um, that SAFE recommends, like say release predictability, um, which is basically a, a calculation of, we said we were gonna do 10 things. If we only did eight of them, then that's an 80% predictability. And so the higher your predictability is, the better you're doing at a planning job. Um, so that can be a useful metric to track. Things like quality types of uh, metrics, like just say easy counts of defects, whatever it might be. Um, we can also look at those budgets versus forecasts and actual costs as they're rolling back in. We can even integrate in with financial systems like say SAP, Oracle, et cetera, uh, PeopleSoft, uh, Workday, um, to pull in those actual costs from the source of record, the financial system to you know, pull this all together. Um, and that's just one example of a report. There are many different tabs here depending on, um, you know, what you're interested in. If I want to see cumulative costs over time, for example, then I can come into that report um, and see how my costs are building over time. Or if I'm more interested in resources, I can come into the resource management, uh, you know, report view, so on and so forth. So there's a full report pack here that will give you visibility and allow you to then communicate that status and how things are going and analyze what's happening to your stakeholders, to your customers, both internal, external, et cetera.